Well, hi guys. <laughs> Good morning. What? Oh, hey, hey. Hi Hello, guys. Mr. Kane. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You can't change the routine, Mr. Kane. You can't. All right. So should we start over? Or should we just keep going? Yeah, just keep going. Keep going. Okay. I, I won't keep up. All right. Limiting and percent yield. All right. So uh, we are beginning the limiting and reactants and percent yields part of the chapter, which we actually based, uh, which we actually touched on briefly on that last one when we were talking about the cheese. The, the, cheese, the cheese sandwiches. You mean you mean they actually had something to do with chemistry? Yes. I guess we did some stoichiometry problems with them. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I love food analogies, so what the heck. All right. So different terms that you need to know. Limiting reactant. So the limiting reactant is the reactant that limits the amount of product that's formed. So it's the thing that you don't have quite enough of. Okay. Uh, in that example that we were doing the other day, I believe that it was the bread that we didn't have enough of. We only had seven uh, slices of bread and six slices of cheese. Yeah, the bread kind of limited how many sandwiches you could make. Because, right. you know, yeah, you're right. We had one leftover piece of bread. The excess reactant is the reactant that does not limit the amount of production. Okay, so that's the one that we got plenty of. That was the cheese. And I think I said that wrong, too. We had a lot of cheese left over, didn't you we? You had a lot of cheese that left over. That was the excess. Yeah. The bread limited us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product possible given the limiting reactants. Remember we said we could make three cheese sandwiches from yes. seven slices of bread and six pieces of cheese? Yes. Mm, that's because we only in theory could have made six. So the theoretical yield, you know what I call the theoretical yield? That is the amount in grams that you calculate with paper and pencil. Okay. That is what you should get if you did a perfect if lab. If you did it perfectly, yeah. And of course nobody ever does a perfect lab. Yeah, but you're, you can always get within a certain percentage. Certain percentage, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The actual yield is if we were actually to go in lab, which we'll actually do a, a, a lab like this, yeah. and produce a certain amount of product, and that's going to be the actual amount. So, you know, after you take away the fact that, you know, some of it spilled, or yeah, you didn't quite you, measure you properly. You walked away from it, talking about your homecoming dress, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, homecoming's well over. No one's going to be doing um, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> Theoretical yield is the calculated one. Actual is the experimental. Mm-hmm. Okay. What you actually get in lab. All right. That's why it's called actual. Actually get. Actually get. All right. So, and then the percent yield, you're going to want to see how far off you are. Rarely get 100%. Isn't that correct? Rarely. Right. You're looking at wanting to get somewhere between 85 and 100%. Right. Probably, yeah. Because 10 to 15% in the chemistry lab isn't too terribly ter 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 bad. Okay, and there's the equation for it. So actual over theoretical, actual is your experimental, it'll always be a smaller number. Theoretical is the one you calculate, and it'll always be the exact number, it'll always be the larger number, because your actual is going to be a smaller amount. Hopefully, yeah. Well, yeah. As, as, long, as, as long as you didn't do something really... Yeah. Okay. So solving theoretical yield problems. Kind of like those, uh, you perform stoichiometry problem on each reactant to form mass, unless you're told otherwise. Right? What do you mean each? You mean there'll be two yeah. stoichiometry yeah, problems? Yeah, there'll be. All right, so in solving theoretical yield problems, the basic idea is that you're going to perform a stoichiometry problem on each reactant to form mass of the same product. Okay. Right? Unless you're told otherwise. All right, so in solving theoretical yield problems, you perform a stoichiometry problem on each reactant to form the mass, unless you're told otherwise of the same. Okay, but if it's a limiting excess problem, they're actually going to give you the quantity of two reactants. So you label the smaller amount of product as the theoretical yield, okay. the smaller mass. Least so when you amount. get to the end, the least amount is our theoretical yield, kind of like with the cheese sandwiches. Okay. Uh, label the reactant that gave you the theoretical yield as the limiting reactant. That's when you don't have enough of. So one number two, when you compare your two answers of the amount of product, you pick the smaller one, uh -huh. and that's your theoretical yield. Then you pop that back and circle your reactant that gave you that small amount. Is that what you're saying? Correct. You'd label that circle as the limiting reactant. All right, here's our sample problem. Uh, determining the limiting reactant and percent yield for the following. Okay. So, we're given, oh, it's the Haber process again. 14 grams of nitrogen react with 3.15 grams of hydrogen to give an actual yield of 14.5 grams of ammonia. Okay, hold it. I don't get it. All right, well, 
Uh, How do we get the 14.5 grams? Is this done for us already? This, this lab was done for us already. They told us that the actual yield was 14.5. That's oh, what they actually so got. this is an experimental mm -hmm. that value. Okay. This, this is an experiment that was done for us. So they said they started with exactly 14 grams of nitrogen and 3.5 grams of hydrogen. So since they gave us the quantity of both reactants, mm -hmm. we have to do a limiting excess problem. We have to do stoichiometry twice. Right, we have to do it for nitrogen and for hydrogen so that we can see which one was, which one will make less ammonia. Okay. Okay. They gave it to us in mass. Yep, they gave it to us in mass, which means we're going to have to do a, a longer stoichiometry problem here. All right. So, all right, so we start out with 14.0 grams of nitrogen. Better write small, Mr. King. So, for since the balance chemical equation is in language of moles, that 14 grams isn't the same language, so we do have to convert. All right, so one mole is 28.02 grams of nitrogen. A mole of nitrogen is going to give me, well, this is a stoichiometric ratio. I want to convert to another substance, in so this case, this, ammonia. Yeah, this is the stoic part, right? Yep, so okay. moles of ammonia. So according to the balanced chemical reaction, one mole of nitrogen gives me two moles of ammonia. So my grams of nitrogen and my moles of nitrogen are now canceled. And according to the instructions, I want to go from moles of NH3 to grams of NH3. Which would be molar mass, because you want to just convert to mass. And so that's 17.04? Mm -hmm. 17.0 grams of product? 17.0 grams of NH3. Okay, that's one stoichiometry problem done. All right, so we know that if we had 14 grams of nitrogen, it would theoretically make 17 grams of ammonia. Right, but that's not our theoretical yield because we have to find out first. That would be assuming we had excess hydrogen, correct? Right. All right, so now we're going to do a second stoic problem, assuming we have excess nitrogen, and then compare the two. Right, we don't have excess hydrogen, so we're going to have to do the hydrogen problem. So one mole is 2.02 grams. Wait, why isn't it three moles? I see a three in the balanced chemical equation. Because that's not the molar mass, Mrs. G. Okay. So the molar mass says that one mole is 2.02 grams. If you wanted me, I could put three moles on top, but then I'd have to put 6.06 .06 grams. No, I don't want to mess up that nice definition. The right. mass of one mole is 2.02 grams. Right. So a moles of hydrogen, and I'm going to turn this into moles of ammonia. So, looking at my balanced equation, three moles of hydrogen give me two moles of ammonia. Right. So, moles of hydrogen cancel. And theoretical yield is usually in mass. So, one last ratio. And the last ratio looks the same for both of them, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does, because it's the molar mass of ammonia. So, one mole is 17.04 grams. Which is 17.7, .7, I hope. Okay. You keep writing. All right, so we, we just found out that if we had 13.15 grams of hydrogen, it would be capable of making 17.7 grams of ammonia, assuming that we had excess nitrogen. Or at least enough nitrogen, but we don't. Now, we only have 14 grams of nitrogen, 3.15 grams of hydrogen, so we can only make the smallest amount of ammonia that's given here. So this number here... Is the smallest amount. Is the smallest amount. So that's our theoretical yield. So this yield. is my theoretical yield. So I'll label it. Do you let students abbreviate? Sure. Oh, God, yes. T-Y. Theoretical yield. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I made a funny. <clears throat> yes, you did. Thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. I see what you did there. All right. Uh, so that means that this here, 14.0 grams of nitrogen, would be my limiting reactant. reactant. Okay. And the hydrogen gas, there'd be leftover hydrogen gas, because it's the excess one, right. yeah? Right, this is the one that I've got excess okay. of, so this would be my excess reactant. So when you're going mass to mass in a theoretical stoichiometry problem, you are going to be faced with two stoichiometry problems, and each of them containing three ratios, huh? Yep. And only one of those ratios is the actual stoichiometry, correct? Correct. And that's that middle one. The other two are just converting from 
mass to moles and then moles to mass. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now we've got one more thing to do. They asked us to find the limiting reactant, which we now have done. Okay. But they also asked us for the percentage yield. I see the actual yield. That's what was given in the problem. That's that 14.5 grams right. of ammonia. That's the experimental. And then usually theoretical experimental is in mass. Mm -hmm. So we put the experimental yield, the actual yield, on top, 14.5 grams. We divide that by what should have been the total, 17.0 grams. Theoretical. Okay, Actual so, over theoretical. So this is the part that we got, the 14 and a half. This is the theoretical whole. We multiply by 100, and we should get a percentage, 85.3% yield. So what that tells you is you got approximately 85% of your ammonia. Right. means 15% of it leaked away. All right, determining limiting reactant theoretical yield and percent yield if 14 grams of ammonia are mixed with 9 grams of hydrogen and 15.1 grams of ammonia form. Okay, so this is the Haber process again. <coughs> there are different quantities. Yep. Hey, we started with 14 grams of nitrogen again. Can I just copy that from my last problem? No, Mr. Kane. Do the work. Um, <laughs> Okay, and so for the interesting part of the problem, now we have only nine grams of hydrogen gas. Only nine grams of hydrogen gas, which is actually mm -hmm. Well, if that's a smaller number, aren't we going to have that being the limiting reactant? Uh, <laughs> moles of hydrogen. So molar mass. Molar mass. One mole of hydrogen is 2.02 grams. It's a diatomic. Back to the balanced chemical equation, the mole-to-mole -mole ratio from hydrogen to ammonia, and that's the coefficients, ripped right out of the balanced chemical equation. And then the last ratio is exactly the same. You can do moles of NH3 on the bottom and grams of NH3 on the top. Six? What? That's a lot. Uh huh, that is a lot, but that's just because we got a lot of hydrogen. I'm going to just check my math for a moment. The theoretical yield is still yep. only 17.0 grams of ammonia. That's the smaller amount, so right. it's still nitrogen gas being so the limiting reactant. This is still my limiting reactant for my nitrogen gas, which means that I have an excess of hydrogen my excess reactant. All right. And then let me erase a little bit of this so I can show my percent work. So once we're done with the excess guy, we don't really look at him again, do we? Not He's really. kind of out of our life. I mean, he needs to be there so that you can grade it. But yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. According to this, we formed 16.1 grams of NH3. Which is the actual or experimental. We divide that by 17.0 grams. Multiply by 100. 94.7%. Ooh, that's a better percent That's a better percent one. yield than last time. I yeah. did this experiment. <clears throat> quantities. That's awesome. Yep, if you're going to feed the world. Yeah, that's or blow a lot. It, or blow it up. Blow it up, yep. Fertilizer, yep. shoe, whatever. 94.7. Mm -hmm. All right.